Welcome in. Happy Tuesday, the Tuesday Top 5. Brought to you by Texas Beef House. Go to bidonbeef.com to get ready for that next auction. Make sure you're ready to go. Uh, Jack and I were the proud winners of a lot of ground Wagyu beef a couple weeks ago, and it's made our lives so much better. And use our promo code 365sports at checkout for a discount. Top five replacement QBs. Look, we've got some quarterback controversies or changes coming around the country. Uh, Some of them are not controversies per se or changes. I'll just go through them with you a little bit different each time. There's nuance to things. Number five, Marcel Reed at Texas A&M. Connor Wegman described by Mike Elko on Monday as day-to-day, week-to-week. That, to me, means he's been Wally Pipp by Marcel Reed, who was fantastic in Gainesville. If you go back to the bowl game he played against Oklahoma State, Jalen Henderson, who was already the backup, got hurt on the first play of the game, broke his arm. Marcel Reed came in and availed himself very well as a true freshman in that game last year. This year, the redshirt freshman uh, made his first career start against the Gators in Gainesville, a really tough place to play. Uh, Sat through a long weather delay. It was rainy. It was lucky. It was terrible. And guess what? A&M won in dominating fashion for most of the game. Uh, And we might have a a quarterback situation in College Station because he was fantastic and probably a better fit skill-wise, skill set-wise, than Connor Wegman is in Connor or in Colin Klein's offense. Number four, this one unfortunately has not happened yet, but if and when DJU gets sat down, Brock Glenn will be the starter at Florida State. I think this is inevitable. Uh, it just hasn't happened yet as of now when I'm doing this, but it could happen soon, and I would assume that Brock Glenn and Luke Cromanuk, the true freshman, will get more reps with the ones as the weeks go on. Florida State at 0-3, a catastrophic start to the season, and look, Brock Glenn's start against Louisville in the ACC championship game was not glorious, but they won, and then the quiet quitting opt-out of the Orange Bowl put him in a terrible position. So we don't even really know what Brock Glenn can be. I do know this. He's more mobile than DJU, uh, and I, I don't think he's as emotionally broken as DJU. So I think that would help Florida State as they go on. Look, if they go out and lose to Cal in their 0-4, what are you waiting for, Mike? What are you waiting for? I can say that to you right now, but what are you waiting for? You know what this offense is with DJ. Let's see what it can be with Brock. Number three, Robbie Ashford at South Carolina. He's well-traveled. He's been at Oregon. He's been at Auburn. uh, And now he is back at South Carolina. Sellers, the starter, got hurt against LSU. And the game changed drastically when Robbie Ashford came in the game. LSU had no answer for Sellers. Robbie Ashford, uh, you know, wasn't just wasn't anything special in that game. He's got some athleticism, but this is bad news for South Carolina if he has to be the starter for any uh, prolonged amount of time. Number two, Alex Orgy at Michigan. Uh, He was the guy we all thought was going to be the starter. Then he wasn't the starter. Davis Warren was, and now he is. This I don't... um, understand how they they kind of got back and forth to this point he's not been much of a, a threat in the passing game but maybe he is and hopefully for Michigan he can spark their offense which is not good right now not good at all they need a lot of help and hopefully for the Wolverines Alex Orgy who's a really good athlete running the ball can provide that spark we hope that it's a good orgy and not a bad orgy they want good orgy not bad don't get me started on bad orgies. Woo. And number one, I don't know if you guys have heard of this guy. He's very little known. Uh, he's, he comes from a small family business of quarterbacking. Uh, his name's Arch Manning. He's at Texas. Stepped in against UTSA as Quinn Ewers has an abdominal injury. Uh, and I think he's going to be the quarterback for the next two weeks uh, as Ewers rests and gets ready because they play Louisiana Monroe, Mississippi State, by week. And then when they have the Red River showdown, they will have Quinn Ewers back. But Arch Manning's going to get a couple of starts, I'm sure, for the Longhorns. And that's great news because he was fantastic against UTSA. It's only going to help him get better for next year when he inevitably starts. And the buzz explodes around him, uh, which it already has. But Arch Manning showed why he is so good and... If you're wondering, 
hey, why aren't Peyton and Eli that fast? Well, his dad is Cooper Manning, and Cooper was a wide receiver. And he's got a little of that wide receiver shaking him. And I don't know if between the two of them, Peyton and Eli, in their college or NFL careers, rushed for 60 yards total, and he had a 60-yard touchdown run against UTSA the other night. That's going to do it for this top five. We'll see you again tomorrow on the top five. We're wrapping it up right here, right now.